Good morning, church, and greetings to everyone watching online. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs> Click on the bell icon to receive notifications of any new uploaded content. Also, gives us a, give us a thumbs up and show some love in the comment section to the people featured in the in the individual videos. Amen. You can also connect to us via Facebook and on our website at www.livingwaterchurchmahaka.com or you can just google Living Water Church Spain and our website should pop up as one of the options. Now that the adverts are over, <laughs> let's get into it. Amen. What's in your wallet? For a lot of people, their lives are in their wallets or purses. And if ever they should lose it or it is stolen, it's a major life trauma. Panic stations. What are you going to do if you can't find your wallet? What's in one's wallet or purse that is so important? I'm going to use the contents of my wallet as an analogy of Christian life. And hopefully, at the end of the sermon, every time you look at your wallet or purse, you will pause and take a look at your Christian life in a new way. Before leaving the house to go out somewhere, whether it's shopping or to a restaurant or to visit someone, you take your wallet with you. And for men, this involves a quick pat <laughs> down to check that you've got your wallet, your keys, your phone. For the ladies, it's a quick rummage around in the handbag to see if you've got the same, your purse, your keys, your phone, etc. The wallet contains the means by which we buy food and other stuff we give to others. It contains proof that we are law-abiding citizens and it is allowed and that we are allowed and competent to drive a certain type of vehicle. It's also our ID to prove who we are. In a lot of cases it has information on what or whom to call in emergencies. I recognize that for a lot of other people there might be a lot of more stuff in your wallet um, or purses like loyalty cards, receipts, photos, business cards, etc. I like to keep the essentials in my wallet and so, so that my trousers or shorts don't end up at my knees due to the weight. Amen. So what's in your wallet? Let me start with the most obvious one. The most obvious occupant of your wallet money. and that's money. Mm -hmm. Now. <laughs> I know what some of you are saying, thinking, show me the money! <laughs> A quote from Jerry Maguire. I think we are <laughs> Under money, I'm also going to include bank cards and credit cards. Now, let me start by saying, money is not the root of all evil. It is the love of money that is the root of all mm. kinds of evil. Mm. As a Christian, having money is not a bad thing. What you do with your money, or the priority in your life that you give to it, is where the potential stumbling block can lie. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 9-10, to 10, it says, Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and, in a, and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. That was true back a thousand, two thousand years ago, and it's certainly most definitely true today. And in verse 10 it goes on to say, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. <coughs> As Christians, we are called to be good stewards of our money. The way we use our money reflects, the way we use our money needs to reflect our obedience to God. Our obedience to God is doing His will, furthering His kingdom, not our own. Making disciples and spreading the good news about Jesus Christ. If you, you, if you are using your money in a way that is not bringing glory to God, then you need to stop and have a good long reflection about your life. Examples of using your money in the wrong way is by buying drugs, gambling, porn, or even flaunting it over others who do not have as much as you. One can serve only one master. 
In Matthew chapter 6, verses 24, and this is Jesus speaking, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. You cannot serve God and both God and money. It also says in Matthew 6 verses 21, For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. For context, Matthew chapter 6 is part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which begins in chapter 5. Support people, organizations and groups that God would approve of. I'm not saying don't financially support non-Christian groups, charities, organizations. If the work they do is to uplift others out of bad situations or circumstances, then I say, go for it. For those who question giving to non-Christian charities, the way I see it is this. You won't be able to tell the good news about Jesus to a starving person or an ill person because all they're concerned about is their immediate need. Show them the kindness, love and compassion of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit will do the rest. Yeah. I do have a caveat or a word of warning on this. If you give money out of selfish or self-centered reasons, then I will say God will not be happy about your giving. Again, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 2, it says, So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues <coughs> and on the street, to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received the reward in full. Basically, you don't give so that others can honor you. You give out of obedience to God because it's what He wants you to do and it, it testifies to others. Mm -hmm. Bank and credit cards. Now there is a major stumbling block. <laughs> As it's not hard cash, we tend to lose track of how much we spend because the quantity doesn't diminish in our wallet the more we spend on our cards, unlike cash. We quickly find ourselves in trouble, and this trouble invariably takes our focus off Jesus Christ. Do not spend money you do not have. If you cannot clear your credit card debt each month, then you need to stop and think about what kind of stewards of your money are you? Do you let worry about money steal your focus and peace? It takes discipline to be good stewards of your money. I'm not saying it is. It takes discipline. You don't need to have the latest technology the very instant it comes out on the market or even the latest fashion. It comes down to what is master of your heart. Things of this world or God. Now, my wife and I are like-minded when it comes to money. We set goals for, our child, for ourselves. We work out how to achieve those goals and then we work the plan but there are always adjustments along the way. That's how we both got to retire before we reached 50. We didn't become recluses and did nothing in order to achieve our goals. We still travelled and did many things. We most definitely carpe diem but kept an eye to the future. We've had some tough times. We both lost our jobs in the credit crisis of 2008 and 2009. So it hasn't always been plain sailing for us. Through all the ups and downs, we never blame God for our troubles. And we thanked Him for our good times. Amen. Call on God in bad times for help and salvation. But do not forget to thank Him in times of plenty. Mm -hmm. We are here, my wife and I, where God wants us to be. To be. We are doing what God wants us to do and blessed by, the, by God in the things we have. We can't take these, the things of the world with us when we die, so do not place all your faith, hope and love in things of this world. Now, when I'm next thing in my wallet is my ID card. I'll quickly flash it. 
<laughs> so that nobody can steal that, uh, my ID. <laughs> my ID card, in this case, is my Spanish residency card. This is the card who identifies who I am, where I live, and my connection to Spain and the Spanish government. It is the physical proof to the authorities and other I am who I say I am. As Christians, our identity is in Jesus Christ. If we truly have our identity in Jesus Christ, we, don't, we shouldn't be needing any physical things to prove who we are. Our actions, thoughts and deeds should be radiating Jesus Christ to the world. Our ID card shows that we are a citizen or resident of such and such a country, that our lives should be saying that we are children of God, citizens of the kingdom of God. I have a home in heaven. Paul tells the Philippians in chapter 2, verse 20, our citizenship is in heaven. What is our Christian identity? In Apostle Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10, he says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared us and prepared in advance for us to do. In the book of John, chapter 1 verse 12 yet to all who did receive him to those who believed in his name he gave the right to become children of God and in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 it says the apostle Paul tells the people of Corinth therefore if anyone is in Christ the new creation has come the old has gone the new is yet as we sang in one of, the, one of the songs we sang earlier. Your identity is that of a born again, new creation, a child of a living God, an heir to the kingdom of God, redeemed and saved. Do you need to constantly show some sort of ID to prove you are a Christian? Or do people look at you and say, you're a Christian, aren't you? Our lives should be radiating Jesus Christ. And the people of the world should be asking us how they can get the ID that we have. How do they get citizenship to heaven? How do they get their ticket? For those who are puzzled by the ticket reference, then please see my previous sermon <laughs> on YouTube called Christian Airlines. <laughs> on a side note, we at Living Water Church have a business card, for want of a better term, <laughs> like many other Christian groups, not to identify ourselves as Christians, but rather to tell people where they can learn about the identity we have in Jesus Christ. How, and also, how they can get their ticket and citizenship to heaven. We don't just hand these business cards out like we are networking at a business conference, 250 to offload in the hope of getting some sort of response, not making it rain. No. The card is a special invitation to anyone who is interested in a new identity in Jesus Christ. We are one of many places where people can apply for this new identity. Our role as Christians should be about spreading the good news about this new ID we have, inviting anyone and everyone to get their ticket to heaven. Like normal invitations, it is up to the individual person to make the choice to make the choice to accept or reject the invitation. Do not force the invitation on anybody. That is not what we are to do. Loyalty cards and discount cards. <laughs> Loyalty cards. Are we, more, are we more loyal to a particular store or brand than we are to Jesus Christ? Do we worship in a certain store <coughs> that 
because it's our favorite and where we love to be and go and spend more time than we actually do uh, being Christians. In Exodus 20, verse 3, and repeated in Deuteronomy 5, verse 7, it says, You shall have no other gods before me. Discount cards. There are no discounts when it comes to Christianity. No shortcuts or avoid paying full price. When it comes to becoming a Christian, it is an all-in, not a half-hearted commitment until a better offer comes along. I'm not saying loyalty cards are bad. We've had plenty over our time. And at the moment, we actually only have one card which gets us a nice discount at a certain store. <laughs> I won't mention it because adverts are over. <laughs> and yes, there are a few brands we like, but we shop with our heads and our hearts. But that's just the way my wife and I roll. Driver's license. My driver's license is also a form of ID, but more importantly, it shows what type, size and weight of vehicle I can legally drive. My license says, license says I can drive a vehicle up to three and a half tons and tow a trailer in relationship to what the vehicle I'm driving can manage. As Christians, what kind of driver's licenses do we have, if at all? Do you have a bare basic license because you are content to come to church every now and again, stay in the background and not do anything because your license is only for a very small vehicle and cannot carry very much or anyone else besides yourself? Or does your Christian driver's license allow you to carry more, has space for you to invite other people along for the journey and can carry you wherever God takes you. Do you have a license for a bus where you can take on board lots of people? As Christians, we should all strive to get our Christian bus license so that we have the ability and space to invite other people along for the ride that we are on. Possibly a train driver's license or perhaps get a pilot's license. Jesus sent his disciples out to make more disciples and this is what we should be doing as well. We shouldn't be sitting in the back of the bus. We need to be up front driving the bus, stopping for everyone saying this car, bus, train or plane is heading for heaven. The ticket is free, you just need to claim it. Hopefully the passengers we pick up today will become drivers themselves further down the road. In my wallet, I also have a medical insurance card. This card gives me access to medical care when I need it. As Christians, we have a medical insurance as well. We worship and serve the God of healing and restoration. I know this is a difficult concept to grasp because Christians have prayed for healing and it doesn't always happen. We get angry or frustrated with God if healing doesn't come. Although God can and does heal us physically, I think more importantly it's about the healing and restoration of our soul. Our physical bodies are just a vessel for our soul and when we pass on the body is burned to ashes or decomposes. It is our soul that lives on forever in Jesus Christ. You are valuable and loved by Jesus, no matter what's wrong with you. Do not let illness or weakness of your physical bodies stop you from being what God wants you to be, but rather use it as a strength to show others what Jesus Christ means to you. Continue to pray for physical healing, but more importantly, pray for the healing of people's souls. Do not let the healing of your physical body be a stumbling block to the healing of your soul. For it is through the broken body of Jesus Christ that we are healed and saved. Amen. We know that through faith healing comes from God and it is by His grace that we are healed. My sister Leslie had cancer. It was terminal. But it did not slow her down or diminish her Christian life. 
Instead, it grew her Christian life and it became a testimony to others. At her funeral, the church was packed, not even standing room. Funeral card. I have a funeral card in my wallet. <laughs> not everyone has this, or has even thought about this, but I have it in my wallet. Why? Because one day, when this vessel yeah. stops being a vessel for my soul, mm. I don't want those still in this world to have to be burdened by or stressed by dealing with this vessel and the bureaucracy that goes along with it. Things will be taken care of for those I leave behind in this earthly world. As Christians, we should know that when we die, our souls are going to be taken care of. If we have the right ticket, then our souls will live on forever in the Kingdom of God. We will no longer need our wallet or purse and all the things in it. If we have used all the things in our wallet to glorify God and to further His Kingdom, then we will be welcomed into our heavenly home. Do you have that insurance about what's going to happen to your soul when this vessel passes? Are you using your Christian driver's license to its fullest? Is your Christian identity secure and rooted in Jesus Christ? Are you good stewards of your money? I encourage you to take a look at your wallet or purse and think about what's inside it. Do you use the contents to glorify God or are you a slave? to its contents. Is it dragging you down like it does to my trousers when I have too many coins in my wallet? Get rid of all the clout in your wallet or purse. Travel with just the things you really need. And that goes the same for your Christian life. Get rid of clout in your Christian life and just travel your Christian life with the things you really need. Remember, you can't take it with you when you go on that final journey to your heavenly home. So, what's in your wallet? Thank you. Well, thank you.